The 2011 NASCAR season is probably the best, or at least one of the best, of the current century thus far. There were memorable moments, great finishes, and underdog winners. But by the end of the campaign, the championship battle took center stage over just individual races. And heading into this race, six drivers were mathematically still in the fight with four races to go. The previous Martinsville race had offered a good preview to what this one would be, with solid racing and a finish that came down to the wire and was exciting. So on a sunny late October afternoon, what would be one of the most unhinged races in recent memory would begin. 500 laps on the smallest track on the circuit. It's far from the easiest track. A difficult grind ahead for these drivers. How will it play into the championship? The green flag is out. The two Roush teammates, top two in points and on track due to no qualifying, would lead early, but the initial run would end up being a dash. Dale Jr. would hop the curb and collect six drivers in an incident, but the first of a continuing trend would begin. In turn three, Brian Vickers would be involved in a wreck. And it wouldn't be the last. See that again. Watch Joey Logano in the 20 and see if he didn't push McMurray into Blaney. Yeah, and then you can see Brian Vickers, he had already committed heavily to get into turn three. A few moments later. Let's see right here. Like Vickers was trying to get in there and let his car roll. Just couldn't keep it on the bottom. Got into Montoya, who was okay after that. But. And while racing up front continued to be fun, and there were some battles and others that were getting involved back and forth, there were others that were getting involved in incidents with Brian Vickers. And, well, that's how we got welcomed back from one commercial break and the end of Jamie McMurray's race. Caution flags out again. That's not the first impact for Jamie McMurray's car under this very brief yellow flag period so far, but you can see Jamie walking away from the car. Uh, McMurray and Brian Vickers here, one and 83, going down into turn three. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna give Brian Vickers the benefit that he got a little loose right there. Hard shot for McMurray there. And when Vickers comes by, McMurray, well, I know baseball season just ended, but we'll call that a swing and a miss. For sure. <laughs> well, you didn't really miss. All right, how about a foul ball then? Yeah. Five cautions in less than 100 laps with another quick one to boot. We'd actually get something, though, that I think many had thought at the time was a forgotten art. Green flag racing. And with it, we'd get some moves through the pack and up front. Kyle Busch moving up to the lead over AJ Allmendinger but an early, though ultimately not close, competitor to Brian Vickers' streak would, uh, well, he'd strike again, and that'd be Dale Earnhardt Jr. Big advantage Kyle Busch had, and here is... Yep. Another example, just getting that into the corner a little bit hard. You could see the 88 of Dale Jr. just get in there, wheel hop just a little bit, had to correct back to the right. Unlike Vickers, though, this would be Junior's last moment of the day that'd be like this, and he would race completely competently the rest of the race. But, much like before, we'd get some green flag runs. Through this as well, the championship would be very close, especially with Edwards struggling back in the pack. But with Kyle Busch taking control, and the way I've described this race so far, you know that the piece couldn't last. But to the field's credit, we'd actually have an even longer green flag run. So with all this, you'd get people moving all over and through the field. The biggest of these being Jeff Gordon, who had run down the 18 and would do what he's done so many times and for so long, lead the way at Martinsville. And just going past the halfway point, he'd also do something even bigger in that moment, lap the championship leader, Carl Edwards. Through the caution gluttony, Edwards had gotten behind with tire strategy, but 
Ultimately, he'd be bailed out by a spinning Mark Martin and get the lucky dog. The big penalty being the loss of the championship lead, though, heading into the race's second half. Though again, the 99 quickly did lose a lap, but this time, the 24 wouldn't be unchallenged, as now, Denny Hamlin emerged as a threat. Through a 98-lap green flag run, you'd almost be mistaken to think that this would have become a completely competent race. Kyle Busch was backing up, and Tony Stewart was slowly moving up again, and you were starting to see who the players were beginning to be. But, in case we needed reminding, we'd get a yellow. This time, gracefully under commercial, at least. With Denny Hamlin and Jimmy Johnson now up front, the closing stages were breaking out, urgency picking up immensely. Gordon fighting right back to the lead, but as one Jeff succeeded, the other would flounder. Less than 100 to go, Harvick to the lead and the top five in points barely separated. You pretty much knew it would only keep ramping up from there with all of this mixing together, and a quick yellow would just bottle it up even more. Though, again, the 99 would be saved from lap down purgatory with the lucky dog on this one. Greg Biffle now joining the spin out brigade for the 13th caution of the day. And add Kurt Busch to the list while you're at it right after. Though, through all of the short runs, this would keep Kevin Harvick, the spring winner, in the lead. That was until Big Bad Five Time popped up out of the pack. Five. He does. Door to door. Harvick's got a choice here. Does he hang the outside of Johnson or can he shut the door before Jeff Gordon gets onto his inside? He's not going to have that choice. The race was really getting fun at this point, and it looked like it was starting to play out in a really good way for the championship and just action in general. So you know what that means. Bring on the 83. Involved in what brought us to the caution flag. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, they're hard to drive like Holy that. Holy cow. You see how, how the back of that car came up? Hmm. With the top three staying out and others also playing tire strategy, Tony Stewart would be the one who would be charging at this point. But with it, the center of the championship attention wouldn't actually go on the 14 just yet. Instead, it went to the 17 and the 18. Kenseth with major damage in the incident, and Kyle Busch's crew giving even more major damage to his title hopes on pit road. As they, as he heads off of pit road, the, the main thing that they were trying to work on was obviously the front end. Kyle called the car killed. Dave Rogers said that, uh, and they did not get all those lug nuts tied, Allen. Yep. Problems worsened. Looks like they got none of them tied. That is the left front from the 18 car. With another quick caution to follow that up, it would keep Jimmy Johnson and his aged tires up front for that much longer. So with 22 to go, Tony Stewart in the field would get another shot. The 48 jumping way out in front while his teammates of Gordon and Earnhardt challenging Stewart while Burton was just ahead of him. Jimmy looked well on his way to an easy victory, but we need to have the end of our storyline for the day. Um, caution, trouble turn four. Brian Vickers is around. Yellow number 18, so much for Jimmy Johnson's gap. I think Brian's been involved in about half of those, his four fresh tires. Oh. Oh my. That's what that was. Matt Kenseth had just come back on the racetrack. I think he might have done this Red Bull Toyota in now. And so, the 18th and final yellow would lead to one final shot at the five-time defending champion. Three to go. Oh, Junior. Nudged around. He and Logano tangled up. He's got him cleared off four. To the lead, Tony Stewart, two laps to go. Do they get to the white flag without another yellow? Can Johnson get the Stewart's back bumper? Here they come. Joey Logano into the wall. Into Far the wall, Hard. turn three. White flag's out, though. Logano still driving around. We are on the last lap. Stewart, Johnson, 
Gordon. Will there be a bump and run? He's going to try it. Johnson gets there, but not enough. Tony Stewart wins at Martinsville. Through it all, Tony Stewart's wild run kept going and his post-race interview would set the tone of the final three races of the 2011 season. You're eight points back of Carl Leverage with three to go, man. We have a championship battle in the making. He better be worried, that's all I gotta say. He isn't gonna have an easy three weeks. <laughs> How about that for a warning from Tony Stewart? Wow. Only eight points out and gapping those behind him, Stewart basically was starting to make it a two-man race between him and Edwards. While Tony would close out his amazing run with Edwards, tying him and only beating the 99 because Stewart had five wins to Edwards one. And while the races in the future at Martinsville would have crazy and unhinged moments, I don't think any quite had the same energy and just craziness throughout the entire race like this one did. So with that, I want to pass this on to you and I want to know what you think the most overall unhinged NASCAR race ever was. Let me know down below in the comments. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more fun NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.